Today we're going to be looking at the prep missions for KO Perico and how you can set up the heist quickly and efficiently prior to completing the finale. With the two and a half hour cooldown timer recently applied to solo players wanting to grind out some much needed cash, a solid approach for the prep missions is more important now than ever. To get started you will of course need a Kasatka submarine, but hopefully you have one of those already. None of the upgrades are especially necessary, but certain elements will make the experience a bit easier. One thing you might want to consider buying though is the Sparrow Helicopter. It's fast, nimble, and can be delivered to your exact location at any time via the interaction menu. Pair that with rockets that can be added for an additional fee, and it will make your KO setups oh so much easier. Once you've got all of that sorted, you'll want to come into the main control room of your submarine and over to the chair in the corner. This gives you access to the fast travel menu where you can move your submarine to a variety of locations scattered around the map. The beach is my preferred area for a number of reasons. First, it's very central to all of the setups and almost always gives good variants of those missions. And on top of that, it also provides one of the best opportunities for saving time, especially if you can't afford a sparrow or an oppressor. Instead of getting out of the chair, you're going to want to press the drive button shown in the top left so that we can move this big behemoth a little bit closer to shore. Once the submarine is ready to go, you can start to accelerate it towards the shoreline in the same manner that you would a normal boat or a car. The trick here is to bring it close enough to save yourself a bit of time, but not so close that it's completely beached and unable to move. You'll start to feel the ground underneath the submarine start to catch a little bit, and that's usually about where I leave it. You can take it a bit further, but sometimes it glitches and you have to call for it again, which just wastes a bunch of time. Parking it around here is far enough to ensure it won't bug out, but also close enough that it will make the prep missions a little bit more efficient. Either way, when you're ready to go, come over to the planning board and we can get these set up started. Alright, now the gather intel phase isn't technically a prep mission and I've covered it before in the past, so if you need help with that, I'll include a link to the guide in the description below. Moving on to the next page, the first thing worth mentioning is the disruption missions will not be required at all. All of the best finale methods revolve around using stealth and they won't help you in the slightest, which again will just waste a bunch of time. So to start out with, we'll go for approach vehicles, and for this one I like to choose the long fin. The Cassart Commission is a little bit faster once you get the hang of it, but the speed and ease that the long fin brings to the finale is well worth the extra few minutes in my opinion. Once you've begun, you'll be instructed to make your way to one of a few possible locations, but they all have the same objective. When you get close, you'll have some vehicle markers pop up on your map, which you'll probably have to go to before getting started. You'll be presented with two spawn locations, one with two truck symbols and the other one with one truck symbol. Two trucks are just your normal big rig style haulers that have a few guards and are easy to collect. The single truck icon is heavily guarded, but also rewards you with a phantom wedge, which isn't strictly necessary, but it can potentially make the mission a lot easier. If you happen to own a phantom wedge already, you can of course skip this step and spawn it in via the interaction menu right next to the objective location and get started right away. But they're quite expensive and a lot of you might not own one already. If that's the case and you fancy turning yourself into a one man wrecking ball, make your way over to the single truck icon on your map. It's also worth noting that you don't actually have to trigger the spawns in order to get the phantom to appear. If you search these spots immediately after launching the mission, you'll find the truck spawned at one of the three locations and you can collect it before going to the waypoint and save yourself a bit of time. Either way, once you get here, you'll know you're in the right place when you see a bunch of deadbeats standing around a truck ready for a fight. Channel your inner Obi-Wan Kenobi and get yourself the high ground to make things a little bit easier. The enemies aren't super difficult, but they do occasionally utilize the 50 cal on the back of the technical, which can wipe you out really quickly if you're not careful. Once you've taken care of them good and proper, you can go over towards the truck, jump inside, and race your way back to the objective point that we were at earlier. You'll immediately figure out why a lot of people suggest getting this truck. It's fast for its size, smashes through everything like the Kool-Aid Man, and is honestly just a heap of fun to use. When you get here, you'll need to turn yourself around, as we're going to be reversing in to collect the trailer. And the cops will be on us almost immediately, so it's good to get everything squared up before you go in. I'd also advise pressing the duck button to minimise any shots taken along the way. All you have to do is position the truck with the trailer correctly, and it will automatically connect. At which point you'll want to drive out of the area immediately to avoid being killed. 
Now we need to lose the cops, so the best way to do that is once you've made it a decent little distance away from the collection point, jump out of the truck and either purposely get killed by the police, or you can use a sticky or a grenade or something like that, but just make sure you don't blow up the truck in the process. When you spawn in, you'll no longer have a wanted level, and it won't reappear once you get inside the vehicle either, so just hop in and follow the marker to the destination to get things finished up. The Phantom Wedge makes this part super easy, as you'll be able to see, but if you've chosen to go with one of the normal trucks, you shouldn't have any problems as long as you know how to drive. Then once you get close enough to the marker, you'll just need to pull alongside this fence, where the gate will take its sweet time to open up before you can drive in and deliver the long fin. And with that done and dusted, you can head back to your submarine and get the next mission started. Now we're on the equipment preps, which will be the main part of our setup journey. First notable mention is that the demolition charges are not necessary at all. The cutting torch does the same job and also gives us access to one of the best entry points in the finale. So to start with, we'll be looking at safe codes, which is the setup mission that is only given to the player for the Madrazo files and the bearer bond primary targets. In all other situations, this will be swapped out with the Plasma Cutter mission, which I'll cover shortly, but for now, we'll go with this. You'll be told to go over to the Diamond Casino and Resort, where you need to access the second level by using the elevator. If you don't own a penthouse, however, you will have an additional step that involves going into the casino garage and stealing a keycard from the back of a car. It doesn't take too much time and certainly isn't worth buying a penthouse for, but if you've got one, it does make things a little bit quicker. Up here you need to find a couple of guards that will be standing in front of a door, which leads to the area that we need to go to. They can spawn at either side, so just make your way around the hallways until you find them. When you do, you can consider taking them out silently to not alert the people inside. Overall, it doesn't make a massive difference because we'll end up having to take everyone out anyway, but it can make things a little bit more straightforward. Once inside the penthouse, if you want to blend in, make sure that you're unarmed. As long as you don't walk around with a gun, no one will suspect a thing. The target can spawn in a few locations, so just move around until you find him. When you do, he'll clearly be marked for you to take out, which you can do as soon as you're ready. His bodyguards at that point will of course jump to attention and try to kill you, so just be careful and be ready to snack an armor up where necessary. When there's a big enough window, go in and grab the safe codes from the guy that you downed earlier. I probably could have taken out a few more guards before doing this, as the animation takes quite a long time, but regardless, it shouldn't pose you too much trouble. Once you've collected the safe codes, you pretty much just have to go back the way you came and fight a whole bunch of guards in the process, leading up to the elevator that will then take you outside. From there, you'll have a cop rating that you'll need to lose before the mission will complete. There used to be a method that allowed the player to blow themselves up after collecting the codes, which would then spawn you outside with no wanted level, but at last count that was fixed and you have to do it the old fashioned way. The next setup we'll be looking at is the Plasma Cutter, which as I mentioned earlier, will take the place of safe codes for all primary targets except Madrazo's files and bearer bonds. To start with, you'll need to come to a safe house that's marked on your map shortly after you begin the setup. There won't be any guards or anything standing in your way, so just go inside the building once you arrive. In here, you'll be instructed to search for a planning board to get more information on the Plasma Cutter's location. But to save a bit of time, you can simply pull out your phone and take a photo right here in the doorway, and it'll still register and give you the ability to send it to Parvel. After that, you'll be given another location to go to, where you'll find a bunch of guards protecting the very thing you need to collect. The plasma cutter itself can't be destroyed, so if you've got rockets equipped, feel free to spam them down there until all of the enemies are taken care of. Eventually, you'll thin out their numbers and you can head down to grab it. Annoyingly, you will still face more resistance until you're able to get back to your vehicle and get the hell out of there. An Oppressor Mark II will make this mission a lot easier, as you can simply fly down directly to the target, collect it, and hop back on to make your escape before any of the new enemies spawn in. But if you have to do it with the Sparrow or the old fashioned way, just work your way through them methodically and it shouldn't be too difficult. Once you've collected the Plasma Cutter, jump in whatever vehicle you've got at your disposal and book it back to the Kasatka. Now we're going to be looking at the Fingerprint Cloner Prep mission, which once again can be started over at the planning board in the main operations room. This one's super easy and will only give you a few enemies to contend with as long as you play your cards right. The building will be guarded by two security cameras, which you can completely ignore and go inside if you don't mind alerting the enemies right away. Once inside, it's a good idea to take some cover behind the crate here. There's not too many enemies, but a couple of them do have shotguns and can tear you up pretty quickly. 
At this point, you might want to consider chucking a sticky bomb up on the wall that's behind the computer. It makes for a slightly faster exit when we're done with the hack. This part's really straightforward. After logging into the computer, you just need to spell out the word Panthers by pressing the select button with the appropriate timing. Then once you're done and have logged out, you can trigger your sticky bomb, which will immediately drop you outside when you respawn. It only saves a small amount of time, and you may just opt to run out the door like a normal person. But hey, I love explosions, and every second counts, right? After that, you'll be instructed to go to an archive and collect the fingerprint cloner before delivering it back to the sub. Regardless of which archive location you get, you'll once again see a few security cameras located out the front of the building. You don't have to destroy them, but by doing so you can collect the mission item without alerting enemies, and you'll have a super easy trip both back to your vehicle and back to the submarine without facing any resistance at all. When you come inside, you'll need to run to the back left hand corner of the building. The fingerprint cloner can potentially spawn in a few different locations, but almost always you'll find it on this desk here. Then you just need to make your way back outside, where if you destroyed the security cameras, you can easily return to your vehicle before going back to the Kassad car and delivering the goods. Next up is the Cutting Torch prep mission, which will be the second last thing we need to do before you finish up and can start the finale. You'll need to go to one of three possible construction sites, the location of which will of course be placed on your map. Now there's a few different ways you can approach this one. The method that the game suggests is to blend in by putting on a construction hat found near the searchable area of whatever work site you're at. You're then told to walk around and look in various highlighted toolboxes until you find the right one containing the cutting torch. The problem with that is, is it can be quite easy to alert them if you stand inside an armed guard's cone of vision for too long. Especially at this location, where it can be difficult to tell where each of the guards are looking. And before you know it, your construction hat will for some reason disappear, and they'll all start shooting at you. For that reason, I usually don't bother, and just go in guns blazing. Or, depending on the location, you can usually chuck in a few sneaky rockets to help thin them out as well. Whatever method you choose though, when you come across the right one, you'll be able to clearly see it inside the toolbox, and you'll be given the prompt to collect it. Shortly after that, some enemies will spawn and try to stop you, but as long as you get back to your vehicle quickly enough, you shouldn't have any problem getting out of there and eventually delivering the cutting torch back to the Kasatka to finish off the mission. And finally, we're up to the last required prep that will be for the purposes of collecting the weapons that you'll be using in the heist at the end. Personally, I'm a fan of the aggressor, because I like getting up close and personal with the shoddy, but pick whatever suits your style, the mission will be the same regardless. Unlike the other preps though, for this one you have the possibility of getting one of two different mission variants, with one being a lot easier than the other. The first one we'll be looking at is the better option, which requires you to go to one of three office buildings where you just need to take out a few enemies before grabbing the weapons and getting out of there. The best place to get started is up here on the roof. You can enter via the ground, but there are enemies there and it takes a lot longer. This is the mission I showed you in backing footage at the very start of the video, but unlike going guns blazing like I did there, you can actually take a much faster and more reliable approach instead. Make sure you equip a weapon with a suppressor attached, as we're going to want to be as quiet as possible to minimise effort throughout this part of the mission. As you approach, you'll see your first guard that we need to take out. So what you want to do is line up your shot first, then shoot once to open the door, and another shot to drop him to the ground. Once inside the office, you can proceed to ignore most of the guards. The only ones you'll need to take care of are up here and around the corner. I feel like they must have had a few too many brekkie cones before rocking up to work, because their reaction times are non-existent. You can take these guys out in a relaxed fashion, and none of the others will be alerted whatsoever. Then go to the safe that's located inside the wall as instructed, before it tells you that you need to hack the computer in order to get access. These hacks always annoy me, but the premise is really easy. Just look at the string of numbers detailed at the top of the screen and match them up with the scrolling numbers below. When you've done that, you'll be able to get into the safe, where you can collect the weapons needed for the heist before exiting the building and getting out of here. Once you've collected them, you can start to retrace your steps and go back towards the elevator. You'll then be given two options, one to return to the roof and one to be transported down to ground level. If you came in via the roof, make sure you exit out there, otherwise you'll be surrounded by enemies and stranded without a vehicle. Whereas if you exit to the roof as intended, you can jump in your helicopter or oppressor and book it back to the submarine before the incoming helicopters have a chance to do any serious damage. 
If, however, you were unlucky and got the Merryweather mission instead of the office mission, you'll be told to go over to their base and scope out a helicopter that you'll then need to follow before being able to engage and take the weapons. If you get this mission variant and don't want to do it, you have the option of changing to a new lobby and starting it again, which gives you a chance of getting the office mission instead, but it could just give you this one again, so it's up to you as to whether you want to gamble the time. But if you decide to do it, you'll need to then wait for the helicopter to take off before continuing past this point. Once it gets moving, you can pull up your map and actually figure out where it's going ahead of time. There are three possible locations that it can travel to, and each of them can be observed on this map I've put together. Depending on the path that the helicopter takes, after a bit of time, you'll be able to tell which destination it's headed towards. It will start to lean in the direction of one of these three spots, and once you figure it out, you can go there in advance to save a bit of time. You'll know you're in the right location when your missiles start locking onto people, or when you see a bunch of enemies on your minimap. At that point, you can quickly take them out before the helicopter even arrives, which will simplify things quite a lot. Once they're taken care of, you'll need to come to the side and wait for the helicopter. Usually it doesn't take too long, depending on how long you've taken to get there in the first place, but do stay out of the line of sight, as it can rip you apart pretty quickly if they see you. Wait for the enemy icon on your minimap to turn from blue to red before firing, and as soon as it does, be sure to rain down absolute hellfire on everything below, and take care of them as quickly as possible. Once you're all good on that front, you can land down near the wreckage below and make your way into the Avenger. There will be a few enemies to contend with here, but honestly, it's fine. The hard part's over now, really. You just need to take them out and collect the weapons before exiting the aircraft and parachuting your way to safety. Again, you will of course have to deliver the weapons back to the submarine, but do give yourself a big pat on the back, as after that you'll be all done and ready to move on to the finale. For anyone that might need help with that, or anything else to do with K.O. Perico, I'll be sure to put links to all relevant guides in the description below. If you found this video useful though, please do it a kindness and tap the like button to help it be seen by more people. And of course, if you are new around here, be sure to consider subscribing as well. I cover Rockstar Games content exclusively, and I provide news and guides for all things GTA Online. Until we meet again, you bunch of legends, I am Red Nitrate, and I'll catch you on the next one.